cooking day. It's our second cooking day. We're making maple syrup from the sap from our trees. Uh, and this is our stove behind me. This is our first year in this house, so we super don't know what we're doing, but we are trying and learning. So I'll show you what we're doing this year. And I'm sure every year we'll get a little better. So let's cook up some syrup. We moved into the new house last summer in 2021. It's in Northwestern Wisconsin, and it's surrounded by 65 acres of trees. And the back corner has about a hundred sugar maples in the maple grove. We love the house, we're obsessed. If you wanna see more, I have a home tour. I will link it down below. To go out to the Maple Grove, we take our ATV, we fill it with five gallon buckets and a storage tank, and we basically have to go out there every day, sometimes twice a day, to collect the sap. Sap season in our area started in mid-March, and it only lasted about three weeks. The season is basically when it gets below freezing at night and above freezing during the day. We tapped 47 out of the more than 100 maple trees that we have on the property, which is a lot because we have a big, big thirst for maple syrup. <laughs> We bought all of the equipment from the previous homeowners, so everything we needed, we had. And it was really amazing. And they also gave us lots of guidance, and we still communicate with them. And the neighbors across the street helped. To go and collect the sap, we put a big storage tank and five gallon buckets on the ATV. So this is our little setup, and it made things very easy. Oh, yeah, she's stopping. Over there, Dripping out. Ooh, can I have some? Well, first let's get this. <laughs> Here, get the hammer. Get the hammer. Oh, hammer. Where? <laughs> He's like, ah! He's like, ah! Oh, oh, baby, that hurt. Okay. He, that's his blood. Can't you feel its pain? <laughs> it's pain? Once the trees are tapped, we put these collection bags hanging on the spiles, and they're so cool. If you listen carefully, you can hear the sap dripping into the bags. There's a hole on the back of the metal piece that you hang on the spile, and then the spile goes right through that, and the sap drips directly into the bag. And you have to go out there every day, sometimes twice a day, to collect the sap. If it gets really warm, it like shoots out and the bags fill up really fast and overflow. It takes a lot of time to collect all the sap every day, fill up the buckets, go to each tree. Sometimes it takes multiple trips if the trees really produce a whole lot. It's definitely time consuming and a family affair, but it was really super fun. I got some milk. I got a chair full of milk. Tree milk. <laughs> It's definitely physically tiring, but the rewards are worth it. And yes, you can drink the sap right out of the tree. It's delicious. It's clear and it's sweet and it's water-like. I thought going into it, when I hear sap, I thought it was gonna be sticky like pine sap, but it's not. It's more like coconut water. This is our big storage tank. It holds about 70 to 75 gallons. And then we have another one that's 35 gallons. It seems like a lot of sap, but the ratio is about 40 gallons to one. So 40 gallons of sap gets you about one gallon of syrup after boiling. We filter it through a fine metal mesh filter before putting it into the storage tank. And then once we hit between 70 to 100 gallons, it's time for a boil. On a day that we were gonna boil, we would filter it again through a fine fabric mesh filter, and then we take those buckets and dump them into the big boiling stove. The stove can hold about 30 gallons at a time, and my husband did actually optimize this with hoses and pumps so he never had to lift a bucket again, but it does look really good. Let me tell you about the stove. So it's under this overhang so we can boil rain or snow, the whole thing comes apart and can be stored in the garage after the season is done. It's a wood burning stove, so the wood goes in this door. There's a vent door right below that to let more air in, and there's a spigot when you're ready to take the sap off of the stove and finish it in a smaller pot. There's a custom made lid by the neighbor that you can put over it in case you don't finish the boil that day, so you don't have to stay out there all night. You can pick it up the next day. I'm trying not to talk your ears off, but Basically, we boiled about 100 gallons at a time, and we ended up doing a boil about two to three times a week for three or four weeks. 
and you boil it all day and reduce it to the point that you want it, and that takes about 12 hours. So basically the day consists of boiling that 30 gallon pan of sap and there's a five gallon warming tank on top of that. You slowly add in that five gallons as it's boiling and then you reduce the sap. And then you add in a little more sap and then you reduce it some more. And you do that over and over until you've gotten through your entire batch for the day. It's very involved, it's time consuming, but it's really fun. It's awesome to sit there and drink a beer and relax. Watching and waiting. As the day goes on, it starts to get a little darker in color. You can see it getting a little thicker and it smells incredible. It's been 84 years. When you get down to the end of your boil, you need to check it with this hydrometer and check the density so you don't leave it on too long. Okay, it did move a little. It's syrup when it gets, when it's floating like that. Oh, when the whole thing comes out. Yeah. Oh. So we need to get the 60 while it's hot. But when that thing, that nozzle's out of water, you pull it off. Our neighbor told us to take it out of here when it, you can see the nozzle. Oops, steaming up the camera. That's sexy. This is where I die. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't want to. If this spills on me, I'm just going to be so horribly burned. <laughs> She's right, though. It's just not worth the danger level. All right, this is good enough. Do it for the gram. Well, no, like, you don't even have it. <laughs> While we're here, this is a good view of the inside of the stove and the insulating bricks and the insulating sand. It's pretty cool. Or like they hold in the heat and they funnel it straight up into the pan. So the only way the heat can go is like into the pan and then this way. This is all insulating sand and then out the chimney. It's gonna drip right in there, supposedly. Oh, so you're really just doing that to get off the heat. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, he wasn't just holding it with his knee. <laughs> I forgot those things were there, and I was like, <laughs> from your ankle, yeah. I would have been screaming at me. <laughs> Fucking stop! Well, you've done it before, so. Well, this thing's actually cool to the touch. What? Really. Oh. It's quite cool. It's quite <laughs> cool. Um, because it's like I don't know aluminum or something, but. Boy, this shot looks like someone is peeing into this bucket. It just looks wet. They're peeing hot tea. <laughs> they really had to go. Someone's dehydrated. You take it off of the big boiling stove before it's syrup, because if it's too thick, it won't go through that heavy duty filter that you saw us using. Then you put it into a smaller pot and you finish it until it's just the amount of thickness and golden amber color that you want. Good corn liquor. I don't know why I think it's going to be more done after like one minute. <laughs> I'm antsy. This was actually the last time that we did all the outdoor crap. Like, it just was not convenient to use this big stock pot and a propane burner and can it all outside. It took too long, it was super tedious, so I ended up moving the entire operation inside into the kitchen, finished the syrup into two like regular soup pots, five quart pots, and then canned it all inside. Because then, I was comfortable, I was inside, everything was clean, and I could blast show tunes. So, it was better for everyone. I love that noise. Here's some more. And here's some footage of my indoor operation. <laughs> Made some funny labels from Vistaprint. It's a long story. And this is the amount of syrup that I got from two days of boiling. Our first batch was a little dark and thick. Don't get it, looks, it looks like a maple reduction. Mm. But it was seriously so delicious. And after that batch, we got that perfect golden amber we wanted. And after gifting some and eating some, this is our haul. And I think this should get us through 2022. <laughs> we'll see. 
The other thing I wanted to pop in here and tell you guys about is that we had one final boil at the end that was kind of like, we were done, we had, you know, some sap still to boil, but we were pretty much done making syrup. We had enough, you know? And we still had some sap to boil, so my husband boiled it and is turning it into wine. Here is our science experiment of making maple wine and our stash of syrup. Again, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> my husband knows what he's doing, but he has beer making equipment and used to make his own beer. He hasn't done beer in a while because the older you get, you know, the more heartburn and beer bloat. <laughs> it's very similar to making mead, which is honey wine, but basically instead of honey, we're using syrup. I have no idea if it's gonna taste good or how it's gonna turn out, but we will let you know. I will update and let you know how the <laughs> syrup wine, the maple wine turns out. Maybe it will suck. I'll keep you posted. Thank you all so much for watching my weird video about making maple syrup in my backyard. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I live here solely to entertain you, so let me know if you liked it. Feel free to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I read every comment on all of my videos, even the ones that are clearly from robots and are not real people. And so if you have any questions, ask me. I will see it and I will answer. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.